On this Monday evening, thank you guys for hanging out with us here tonight. We appreciate you all showing up the way that you do. <laughs> Ann Herndon says, I live in the Eastern time zone. We are encroaching on my bedtime. Well, you're a good soldier, Ann. And you know what? Nobody gets me better than Ann does because for all of you bitching, in the comment section, this, that, and the other. You know who I respect the most? I respect Anne because she gets the vibes. I'm not late. You're effing early, but that's okay. And I want to get you out of here before your bedtime, and we will address these things throughout the course of the primetime show. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of you guys showing up. We'll share the, or I'll ask you to share the show here in just a second. Uh, Puka knows the vibes tonight. Welcome to the Titans going single platoon. Yeah, the defensive needs are everywhere and they continue to swing and miss on defensive free agents which is a cause for concern so we'll talk about these things together and we will get into the latest uh, chase young being the latest and what implications we have for that uh bert is not feeling great he's a little under the weather i am also under the weather though that's not why i'm uh running behind we had a little bit of a i need a new laptop basically is the is the summary so i'll uh we'll, we'll get with austin and zach about that at some point when I get back from vacation. But uh, William Young says the Titans didn't even get a swing, Buck. Well, I mean, that's the game. And they have gotten a swing on some of these guys, and they flat out missed. Jerome Baker is uh, is an example of that. And we'll talk about all of these things together because there are some stuff, or there is some stuff out there for the Titans to land, and they haven't been able to get it done beyond Shadobe Owuze and Kenneth Murray, both of whom are, you know, Below average, well, Awuze is an, an average NFL starter. Kenneth Murray is a below average NFL starter, but we can talk about these things together. Um, so share the show around Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. That is the vibes. If you are hanging out on Twitter, please retweet it. YouTube and Twitch, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're on Facebook Live, you can share, share now to public. That is in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Uh, we'll go ahead and get it started. Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising, and I'm proud, as always, to be presented to you by the fine people at Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, and get up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. ZenSports.com is where you go. True Math Fitness in the Gulch, where you can go for your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident. A new way to work out for the best version of you. TrueMathFitness.com. And Two Rivers Ford, quality American-made Ford vehicles at the South's most trusted Ford dealership, Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com. Speaking of Two Rivers, I'm going to shoot uh, three more TV commercials uh, for them tomorrow, two before the show and one after. So trying to uh, keep my voice intact because God forbid I get a little squeaky and scratchy on these TV commercials that they're having me film. Either way. Titans and defensive needs. They are everywhere. We talked about Andre Dillard getting released on Friday on the podcast. That is a position of need, of course, and they still have needs on the offensive line. Uh, you saw that Andrus Pete is scheduled to visit with them, the former Saints guard, longtime Saints guard, because they are not done with the offensive line and they need to continue to bolster that. But defensively, they've got four players that you trust. And, you know, I would still say that the book is still out on Roger McCreary, though I Roger McCreary is definitely trending towards being one of those more more reliable players. I think Roger is a, is a is a solid young corner, and we'll see if he improves over the course of this coming season. But in the meantime, this Chase Young thing um, today, it's not the end of the world, but it's made worse because they didn't get Eric Armstead. They didn't get uh they didn't get uh DJ Reader. They haven't gotten guys like Puna Ford and and all manner of other, you know, stopgap one year contract defensive linemen that are out on the free agent market to be had. And they're not in on every one of them, but still, there is nobody to play next to Jeff Simmons right now. They have not replaced uh Tier Tart. I said that weird. They have not replaced. I don't know why I said replaced. Uh, they have not replaced Tier Tart, nor have they uh, filled the void that Denico Autry is going to leave both inside and out. Because remember, Autry played more edge than he did defensive tackle here in Tennessee, and that is what made him such a good piece, such a valuable piece, because he could play multiple positions 
up front and allow your defense to be even better as a result. So that Jeff Simmons and Harold Landry are probably, lo- and I know Arden Key's there, but, you know, I-, I think jury's still out on Arden. Rashad Weaver is, he's got good effort, which is about as nice a thing as I, as I can say about Rashad. And that's fine. You have to have effort, but he's just, he's not, he's not an effective player to date. This is a defense that is pretty problematic. I mean, this, we're trending towards 2020 third down defense vibes if they don't get a fix in here soon. And they'll have the draft to address it. Um, Eric Alonzo says, Chase Young, I'll pass, which is fine, but you don't have shit else, is my point. Jeff Simmons cannot do it on his own. Harold Landry cannot do it on the, on their own. And they were both a part, Jeff and Harold, of the worst third down defense in the history of professional football in the COVID year. They they themselves are not enough. Uh, Jeff is not Chris Jones. Uh, he's probably about 90% of Chris Jones, which is still really, really damn good. But he's not that force in the middle, the way that the best defensive lineman in the NFL is. Um, and Harold came on strong throughout the course of the second half of the season. He started to look more like himself as things progressed and as he continued to recover off that ACL. But there's just uh, there's a lot uh, there's a lot to be desired here beyond those two and Amani Hooker and Raj McCreary. This defense is pretty pretty problematic. Now it's March 18th. They have the draft, and you can't fix everything in one off season, as Tristan Elliott is quick to point out. And that's that's all well and good, but you need some solutions here. And the offense is all well and good if you can if you can score what, 27 points per game or something like that? That's great. But if you get 28 put up on you on a weekly basis, what all is that going to do? It is going to be something that we're going to continue to monitor. And they there are still free agents out there. I would be in favor of bringing back Christian Fulton. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition or not. I know that that, that is on the table for them. That's not something that uh, Rand Carthon has ruled out in any by any stretch of the imagination. So let's start with uh, your Two Rivers Ford take here this evening. What is the uh, what one word would you use to describe the Titans' defense right now? Let me know on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. We'll talk about it together right after I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by Two Rivers Ford. The South's most trusted Ford dealership is Two Rivers Ford. Quality American-made Ford vehicles and all their new non-specialty Fords below MSRP. Go to Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com. Looking at the Titans' defense, how would you describe them? Unfinished, says Eric Alonzo, which, by the way, is a totally fair characterization on March the 18th. Mediocre, says Amar. No, they were, I mean, they were worse than mediocre last year. They were the worst passing defense in football. Um, they are, uh, they, they're below mediocre. Mediocre would assume that they, that they were operating on base level to begin with, and they've lost plenty of pieces and parts. In fact, you could argue that they've lost two of their most important pieces in Danico Autry and Aziz Alshare. Uh, shitty, says Jack's junk removal. Um, right now, I don't think that's an unfair characterization, though a defense with Jeff and Harold and Amani Hooker and one corner in Roger McCreary. I don't think you can outright say is shitty. Diminished. Uh, it says my burner account. Look at that. I've got the burner account uh, wandering around there. Is that an eighth roast branded burner account? Why would that be the case? Either way, um, that's a fatter picture of me too. I don't love that, but that's all right. Uh, so I think that there is a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different players that this team could still add, and free agency does not end in the first week. Hell, we're not even a full week, remember, into free agency because free agency didn't mm-hmm. technically begin until last Wednesday. I think that the one word that I would use is problematic to date because right now, four good players, four solid players, one elite player in Jeff, and three solid, three, well, one elite player, two good players, one solid player in Roger McCreary uh, is how I would categorize this. That's not enough for you to, even if you start to fill in replacement level talent around them, they need significantly more help if they're going to be anywhere close to as impactful as this team hopes for them to be. Now, uh, Chase Young, uh, and I don't see that video, Burt, but that's okay. Um, Chase Young was signed by the New Orleans Saints today. He had a visit with the Titans after he was supposed to, uh, well, he was supposed to visit with the Titans if he made it through New Orleans. And of course he didn't make it through New Orleans. But as you look around, you see a variety of different players that they've swung and missed on Eric Armstead, Jerome Baker, 
now Chase Young and DJ Reader. This is a defense that has become more and more problematic uh, because they are interested in parts. Justin Simmons, uh, DJ, uh, or excuse me, CJ, not DJ, CJ Gardner Johnson um, was a safety that they wanted and were not able to sign. They continue to swing and miss on these defensive free agents, and I'm not quite sure what the cause would be. But Chase Young signs a one year, $13 million deal. It's fully guaranteed. And of course, you know, Chase Young's interest in playing for the Saints outweighed his interest in playing for the Titans. He wanted to go play with, uh, well, I'm blanking on the, the name of the uh, of the very good defensive end uh, for them for, for forever. He has a podcast now. It's going to drive me insane. Uh, number 98 for the Saints. You guys will let me know in the comment section, but I'm, uh, I'm blanking on the name off the top of my head. Either way, I think that when you talk about the uh, talk about the players here, uh, Cam Jordan, thank you. Um, uh, Chris, Chris Vonta got me with that. Cam Jordan is somebody who the Titans, uh, or rather who Chase Young was interested in playing with, in learning from, and in improving his craft. He gets a, a low-risk deal for him. $13 million for an edge rusher is just fine. It's fully guaranteed. There are some effort issues with Chase Young, which is worth monitoring. But also, you don't have anybody beyond Jeff and Harold that's better than Chase Young. Arden Key is not better than Chase Young. Um, I, I'm looking at Rashad Weaver. He's not better than Chase Young. Now, with the proper parts, I think at 94, David Lee. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, there are a lot of different players that we may not be talking about, and these are more notable name brands in the first wave and a half of free agency, I think that there's a lot of this stuff that you would continue to, uh, that you will continue to pursue and you'll add more pieces and parts as we go along here. But right now they need more players and they're missing out on a bunch of the players that they are allegedly and not allegedly that they are in on, which is an unfortunate for them. But I think when you talk about the, uh, I think that when you talk about the Titans and where they're at right now, my main takeaway with this is they're problematic on defense. They're probably not going to be a very good defense in 2024. I, I, I don't anticipate them. Just, you know, gut feeling. Uh, Randy Cherry says we still have Weaver. Yeah, but Rashad hasn't done anything worth a damn. Like, he's he, he's he's got great effort. He's got an, a good attitude. But Rashad Weaver is not any kind of an impact player. Uh, that's not a plus for you. It's just a warm body that you can throw out there from time to time. But with all of this... Um, I think that there is a lot of, uh, I think that there is a lot to be desired and that problematic is the word on March the 18th that I would describe this. Now, I don't know that the Titans are going to have like, this is going to be a two year thing, right? Them trying to get off the schneid is going to be a two year process. And, you know, maybe they win, they win seven or eight games. This year, I think that's a reasonable expectation. Uh, I know more of you uh, or most of you will have higher expectations for them. I don't think that they're going to be any better than league average. I think that there's still a lot of work to be done, both on offense and on defense. But the defense right now is the thing that's most glaring. Uh, Steve says, why did we let go of T.R. Tart? Because uh, he had a bad attitude and he wasn't taking care of himself. He wasn't conditioning himself properly. He wasn't performing the way that a professional athlete should and he's a really talented player but this I mean this goes back to when Tart was recruited to Alabama had some some concerns around his general attitude ended up at uh I, I don't think he went to Juco first but I know he was at FAU uh when he went as an undrafted player he's just got a bad attitude generally and and that is something that has continued to plague him he's not signed by the way you could bring him back, I suppose, but I don't know that that's going to go well because um, of the way that things ended here. I don't think that that sends the right message. There is a, there's a lot of this stuff that you, that you look at and say, well, all right, are you willing to live with a bad defense if you pri prioritize, which they have, the offensive side of the ball this season. Uh, David Lee says, did everyone forget about Caleb Murphy's dominant preseason? Just has to learn the NFL way. I don't know what that means, learn the NFL way. He had an entire season. Uh, he couldn't get on the field over Travis Gibson. Uh, the one time that he was out there, he had a terrible gaffe on special teams, which cost his team significantly. I believe it was on punt return or punt, maybe punt block. Um, Caleb Murphy didn't do jack shit. Uh, and preseason doesn't mean anything other than 
you know, occasionally you'll figure out a returner or a third running back or something like that. Like preseason, preseason performance, a dominant preseason. Preseason doesn't mean anything to me. The guy from Ferris State, again, like I said, couldn't get over Weaver, couldn't get over Travis Gibson, who, by the way, is not available for you to sign because he signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars today. This entire division is loading up on defense as you start to retool the offensive line. It's going to be a difficult slog. You have to have some capability of getting a pass rush and some capability of getting a, a getting a stop, even as you probably are going to score more than 17 and a half points per game this year. I think that there's a, a lot of this stuff that you need to uh that you need to be realistic about. And, you know, I think realistic expectations for the Titans should still be pretty low. Um now. What they end up doing, of course, this is not what it's going to look like when when this team reports. I think they're reporting like April 7th, by the way, because they have a new head coach and that allows them to uh, to come into camp or come into voluntary stuff earlier than teams with uh, returning head coaches would be. But with all of this, corner is still a need. Defensive tackle is still a need. Defensive end is still a need. Inside linebacker is still a need. Safety is still a need. At every level of the defense, you have glaring issues. And Jeff Simmons and Harold Landry are just, are, and Amani Hooker are just simply not enough. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's it's too early to to have any kind of like any kind of problems with the way that they're doing business. But it is not too early to be concerned about the rate of players that they have been in on and not able to close those deals out. So we'll keep an eye on the situation moving forward. But for now, Titans defensive cupboard. It's pretty damn bare. Now, I was making jokes today on Twitter. Many of you didn't enjoy the joke that I made about the idea of the Titans taking a defensive player potentially at seven or trading back and taking a defensive player. I uh, I think that this is, uh, I think it's as real a possibility as it's ever been, even though you still have a glaring need at tackle. Which brings us to our second subject, which of course we will talk about right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000 on your no danger first wager. Zen Sports also has same game parlays for you to get in on the action with. No matter how you like or what you like to wager, your favorite sports are available to you in the Zen Sports app. So download the app today, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000. Like I said, terms and conditions do apply. Gambling problem called the Tennessee Red Line 1 800 889 9789. Uh, must be 21 or up and in the state of Tennessee to bet. Uh, Titans take the first defensive player on the board, LMLEO, get ready. Oy. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think I think it could be real. I think it could be really real. Now, there are defensive tackles that I think you can get in the second round. The It's not a great defensive line class. The strengths are wide receiver and, and offensive line, as a matter of fact. Now, those are less glaring needs for you as you look at this, but there are still needs all over the place. Uh, trending that way, says Corey Smith. Um, Colby Ryan Cooper with uh, the doomsday comment. Rand Carthon is killing this team. We shouldn't have this many holes with this much cap space. This front office can F off. Colby, that is the most dramatic thing that you could possibly say. I don't know why you are so in your feels about this. He's not killing this team. All he's done is give you the most offensive firepower on this team that you've had since 2019 when you went to the AFC Championship and 2020 when you put together the best Titans offense in the 25-year history of this franchise. Not going back through the Oilers, but uh, in 25 years, there has not been a better Titans offense than the 2020 offense, and this is as much talent as you've had. The idea that he's killing this team is completely inaccurate. I think that that is, uh, I think that that is something that, you even if you like even once we got through the 2020 draft you guys didn't accuse John Robinson of that until it got basically to the AJ trade right and in fact John's drafts did contribute to this team being down tremendous but that was not something that you came out of the gates with absolutely not the idea that you would sit here in pearl clutch when again I remind you free agency started last Wednesday there are so many different free agent players that are still out there. Maybe, I don't know, 60 of the top 100 are off the board. It may not even be that many. Uh, and depending on how you have your top 100 put together. But I just think that that's such a completely ridiculous thing. We shouldn't have this many holes with that much cap space. You haven't even gotten a week into free agency. Why are you so butthurt 
about this. It's okay. I mean, we're here for you. And if you just need a little bit of guidance, we're happy to provide. I assume that you'll watch the tape of this. You'll improve your comment for the next time because that was God awful. Colby do better. Uh, so as you look at the, uh, as you look at the Titans and where the biggest needs are, what is the biggest hole? Obviously on this roster, we'll talk about it together on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by the Ashton Real Estate Group of Remax Advantage. Go to GaryAshton.com and get your dream address without the stress and the Intel edge you need to succeed with GaryAshton.com, the official real estate agent of the Predators. Biggest need or biggest hole, uh, most obvious hole on the roster to you is what? Lewis says nose tackle, and I'm not going to dismiss that because T.R. Tart was legit. And you don't have anybody to play inside. You don't have anybody to play right now next to Jeff. Now we'll see what they do in the draft. It's there's a couple guys there that I think you could uh, that you think uh, that I think you could be interested in. A lot of you guys nominating linebacker, even though you did sign Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray has not been a uh, he's been an underwhelming former first round pick in L.A. And Brandon Staley's defense had all kinds of problems. So maybe that's not a Kenneth Murray issue, and we'll find out. He's a really, really high-level athlete. But to date, he's Rashawn Evans 2.0, and that's concerning to me. Linebacker, um, Jimmy Evans says, secondary for Ann. Secondary, you have you need, I mean, Awuze is a starter, but he's had a bad health history. So you probably need to hedge your bets and add at least two more corners at this point because Roger McCreary at his best is a slot corner, not an outside player. Safety as well is somebody that you need. Uh, awaken to the eternal.com. That's really, really long. It says, don't forget Denard Wilson player development. Okay, but you don't have any players. Like that's that's the thing. What is it gonna you're gonna do something with Caleb Farley? Like, I don't I don't know what that means, player development. Now, like I said, this is all pre-draft. So these these are uh, and Elijah Molden is maybe in that category, but like, where, where are these players? The, the, the whole point of the show is that they have been in on players that they have not been able to seal the deal on. So in order for Denard Wilson to improve the players, he has to have the players signed here to get that done. We'll see how many they add defensively in the draft. There are, there are corners that they should be able to add in the upcoming draft. Absolutely. But like, if Caleb Farley is your idea of Denard Wilson player development, then, you know, I, I, uh, I, may God, I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul type of situation. But when I, when I look at the roster, the biggest, the most obvious need is still left tackle because remember Dennis, uh, not Dennis Daly, uh, Andre Dillard, they should retire the number 71 after those two war back to back years. It's a nightmare. Andre Dillard getting cut, Jalen Dan, uh, Duncan and, Dylan Radens, the only two players on the roster. Well, I guess NPF has some left tackle snaps too, but he's not a left tackle in the pros. We'll see if uh, if they're able to do anything with him with Bill Callahan. But left tackle is still the most glaring need. And as you look at this, um, I would bring us back to our conversation with Brian Callahan at the Combine when the head coach sat down with us and we talked about the merits of at the time, this is pre-Calvin Ridley and pre-NWI, at the time, wide receiver versus tackle and how you would prioritize those needs a couple of years ago in cincinnati you guys had offensive line needs you guys had wide receiver needs similar to the situation with the titans and ultimately jamar chase was the pick turned out pretty good player yeah <laughs> pretty good player pretty good player but they Sewell sitting there as well what was kind of the the dialogue for you guys as a staff because you know i imagine there's going to be similar discourse around yeah. the offensive line prospects and wide receivers in this draft you know one one of the things i've always said when, when asked about this debate is um I, I had landed at some point in my career, usually in, in Denver is usually what I like him back to, and we had uh, Demarius Thomas, uh, Wes Welker, Julius Thomas, and uh, Emmanuel Sanders. Obviously, we had a great quarterback that was at, at the end of his career, um, but those guys in one-on-one -on -one situations could win uh, when you needed them to win, and a, in a tight moment at the end of a game, all those things. And so I've always that's always resonated with me, and when we had a chance to pick a player like Jamar, um, I always just thought back to what that offense looked like, and that was sort of the vision of what we were trying to look like in Cincinnati with an elite quarterback, elite processor, um, to find guys that could go in and separate. And the debate was always, well, you got to protect the quarterback, obviously, or you can't throw the ball. And we didn't necessarily believe that. We felt like if you got great players on the perimeter, 
throw the, they can go win versus press coverage and all the teams that are trying to condense everything and rush the passer, uh, if you can win quick, you can throw quick. Um, so that was our philosophy in that moment. Obviously, Jamar Chase coming out, premier player. Uh, there was no doubt that he was going to be an all-pro player. There was no doubt that Panay Sewell was going to be an all-pro style tackle. There was no question on either one of those players, right. um, their talent level and how they would fit in the NFL. I think that's unique. I don't know that you're ever going to get in a spot where sure. both, both of those guys Different year. Are, are that caliber of player where there's going to be one that's going to be better than the other, and, and that sort of makes a decision for you at the end of the day. But um, I've always felt like today's offenses, I think you still have to protect the quarterback, um, but but to score points, you got to have guys that can score points. And um, I've always felt that. I've always believed that. That doesn't mean that that's we're just going to automatically take a receiver. Uh, hey, you're giving people chest tightness, yeah, Brian. No, that doesn't, <laughs> I, I don't mean to say that. I'm just philosophically I've always felt like the, the better, more, more talented receivers you have, the better chance you have to score points. Um, but So that's a uh, portion of the Brian Callahan interview that we did at the Combine. You can check out all the interviews that I do for the radio show, including Calvin Ridley. Last Friday, we had Ran at the Combine, we had Callahan at the Combine, and uh, we'll have many, many more as we get ready for another football season. But, you know, we'll see what they what they end up getting offered for seven. Minnesota uh, being interested in quarterbacks makes a lot of sense, especially now that they did that deal with the Texans for two first-round picks to give them ammo to move up. Of course, we know that they've been in contact with Las Vegas. There is a lot of this stuff that they still have to work through, and there's no telling what the draft board will look like by the time they get there. And they may end up sticking and picking at seven and doing the most obvious thing, which is left tackle. I think left tackle is still the most obvious thing. But this is a team that has a variety of different needs and has only so many resources this time around to address them. They still have plenty plenty of money to work with, but like I said, that they keep swinging and missing on these free agents is cause for at least a degree of concern. Absolutely. Uh, We would normally do, in case you missed it tonight, but Bert is under the weather. I am as well. But, uh, you know, we powered through for you guys here this evening. We appreciate your patience, as always. I'll remind you on the way out the door that the primetime program is made possible by TrueMath Fitness in the Gulch. TrueMathFitness.com, a new way to work out for the best version of you. You can get your first workout free at TrueMathFitness.com. No workout ever recycled or repeated. Go in there for a group fitness class or personal training uh, the way that I like to. Or just get a membership and go work work out at TrueMav when you like to at TrueMavFitness.com. Have a great rest of your evening. Radio show tomorrow. We're going to be talking a lot of Titans free agent. We're going to talk about Mason Rudolph, um, a lot about Mason Rudolph tomorrow as uh, as the Titans backup quarterback. That is a need that they did get addressed. I don't love it of the options that were available to them, but we'll work through that process tomorrow. We'll do, uh, we'll talk a lot of March Madness as well, 10 to 1 on 104.5 The Zone. We hope you'll join us. Uh, Primetime schedule is a little different this week. Uh, Thursday, we'll we'll have shows through Wednesday, and then uh, Thursday I'm on vacation, uh, and I will be back the following Wednesday. So we'll have a, an abbreviated primetime week and then an abbreviated primetime week next week as well. So just keep an eye out for that. Have a great rest of your night. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone. This is our cult. This is our team. We bleed blue. This is our cult. Whether win or lose, we love them. For the shoe, beat the Titans. Let the world hear us now. This is our team. Go cold.